Hello, I'm here in lockdown of Greater Sydney and it went through my mind what a cello player could do just for fun, beyond a program or a practice routine. Let's do some silly fun things, things without needing to read music, stuff you can just do by watching and imitating. Just to let you know, if you click underneath the video Show More, all activities are listed so you can skip through and go back and find it again. Well, I start playing just with my arm. Can you do that? Yes, and even with vibrato. But first, as you saw, I pull my sleeve down so that the string doesn't push on my skin because it hurts. So let's have a look. Let us play scale. Seems all right. Hope I got the fingering right. Arm, 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 arm. So I try another one. Frere Jacke. And I start with an open A string. But you can play even pieces from sort of a more difficult repertoire or concert pieces or melodies you know. And I try, I try to play the swan. So I got the first note. So that's it. Let's have a go. It reminds me actually of some Asian instruments like the Erhu, where you glide always up and down. Anyway, are these things just silly or are they useful for something? Yes, they are actually very useful because when there's no position we can rely on, we need to listen to every single note and it's a very good training. And now I show how the D string disappears. I play second finger on F. And look that I don't touch the A string with the back of my finger. This time I play softly and lightly. And touch point of the bow is the beginning of the fingerboard. So it's nice and soft. And now I glide, glide up. I can only hear A and D. There's no D string at all. Well, now I glide back and find the spot where I lost the D string can hear again. That's different on every cello. But here I can play three strings together. Now if I vary a little bit, and I give in with the bow that I keep the spot where three strings. Perhaps I can play a little melody. Well, that's all right. Particularly, you, usually you can't play three strings together. And also, it's a, it's a great new feeling. A and G are not a great companion for harmonies, really. So what I do, I change the G, G to an F sharp. And that's just enough for the fine tuner. So I tune it down. Ah, beautiful. 
just might mention don't tune instead the A string up because some brands the snap a B flat so tune the G string down and now I try it again and uh, play three strings together and hope I get a nicer melody much more atmosphere I find. Well, I keep the tuning and do the same thing like before, but I go actually just a little bit further. Then I have again the D string sticking out a bit. And then with the G and the F sharp, uh, with the A and the F sharp, I might be able to do little swirls and go up and down. Let's have a look. Yeah, that's me, yeah, yeah. this even more exciting. It's really nice. So when I tune it back, maybe you have noticed that it happens to you that you go up high and without wanting you touch actually another string. And that's what you can learn here, to look for the level. If you go really up higher, to do with it. By going up on high on the D, the bow needs to be actually closer to the bridge because otherwise they lose it. And where they don't lose it, it at least touches the neighbor strings. So the D string needs to stick out that far that we can play with it with secure clearance to A and to G. So again, we can learn something from it. And here, a fantastic activity to fill a whole afternoon. Harmonics. First, I take a tape measure. And I take a soft one. The ones in a box, they might drop on the cello by mistake and slip, and they can make marks. Well, harmonics are a mixture between a sensitive, long and thin creature. This one here, string, and a math teacher. It's very curious. They only work at accurate division points, so-called knots. You might have seen these knots, apart from the string, in a skipping rope. And you give it a flick and then it swings like this and in the middle is a knot. So if you have two parts, in the middle is always a knot. But there can be three parts and two knots. So first I measure how long my string is. So it is sixty nine centimeters. So I measure from the end of the nut here and to the bridge because that's where the string sounds. And the rest really for the string doesn't matter. So that's sixty nine centimeters. If you have a three quarter cello, it's different, it's three, four centimeters shorter, but some cellos are five millimeters longer, five millimeters shorter, or even a centimeter. So best measure. And then I divide it by two, which is 34 times five centimeters. So, 
34 times 5, 33, 34 times 5, it's exactly here. That way, I get the ball and I, and I play this note. Well, this string, this note, I have an A string, is an A as well. Actually, that's the only harmonic which comes when we don't get it accurately. It's amazingly tolerant. Like here's accurate, but if we would push it down, it would do like this. But on the spot which is correct, it comes clearest. And that's the spot where it would make the same sound when you push it down as well. So here we are. It might not look like, like it, but this is exactly the middle. You might think this is longer than this or the other way around, but it's not. It's exactly the middle. 100% accurate. And it gives us an octave above the open string. A. And another A. And now I divide by 3, which is 20, uh, 69 divided by 3 is 23. Oh, there's 23, 22, 23, it's here. Now this time, I go to the C string, because maybe even on a video you might be able to see the string vibrating. And the C string vibrates much stronger. And then you can see I can see from here, here's another spot which doesn't vibrate at all. And I hope you can see the G string, without even touching it, volunteers to join in. And when I touch this knot, you can see it is the same note as the C string produces when I divide by 3. So divided by 2 on the G is divided by 3 on the C. Well, because we, all the strings are tuned in the same distance or interval, which is a fifth, it's everywhere the same. So if you have an A, then we have the D. You have the D, you have the G. And then we have here the G, times when I grew up, before digital tuners, everyone used to tune like that. Like, the A is a tiny bit flat actually. This is still a bit flat from before. How we used to tune and it's actually faster and you can do it at any time and it makes your ear listening because as a string player you need to listen to every note not only if the string is in tune every note has to be in tune we need to listen it we can't rely on this is first position it's that note it might not be right and now I ask you to divide the string by 4 and look what happens. What note will it be? So 69 by 4. And you can take a calculator, I have one here, but uh, I'll leave you to it. Then divide by 5 and then by 6. And you can't see where it is, you just take stickers and you stick them there and then so you can find it and try them on all strings. Just remember the math teacher in these strings. Two fourth equals one half. And three six equals one half as well. And the string knows about simplifying. Just try it out. Now sometimes you might play a harmonic 
or want to play one and it just it doesn't come. Firstly, a finger when played normally with pushing, it always comes even out of tune. It always comes. So we are not used to that suddenly we play with a bow and nothing comes. We are not used to this. But the harmonic, that's the reason, doesn't tolerate that we are out of tune. It's not like with a normal note, where we think later, oh, that was not in tune. No, it just doesn't come. And the math teacher in the string says, incorrect. Please find that spot more accurately. But it's not only accuracy, but also how we put the finger down. To understand playing the harmonics, one needs to know the string, although divided by some number with the harmonic, how we, where we touch it, the string needs to remain 100% straight. And if the finger is pushed, the harmonic suffers. Like this is now well played. It needs to be really light, because when the string is bent, it's like a living creature, it suffers. Touch the string as if you touch a living being and don't want to interrupt its vibrational life, the straightness. Just initiate the split, invite the string to cooperate, and it will do, if you are, pol if you are polite enough. So, maybe you have seen, I don't even bend my finger, because when we put it on the tip, then we might push. I keep the finger straight and just touch. If it's too light, a little bit more, particular in G and C. But to control these bits of pressure, it's best to keep the finger straight. It doesn't matter which one. I took the one, you can take two, three, four, it doesn't matter. And then, of course, comes a bow treatment component. To get the normal harmonics, division by two or three, we can just play like usual. But with higher divisions, like already four and five, it's better to get closer to the bridge. That encourages to hear smaller divisions. I show something related to this, and it's very pretty and sparkly. I play the ball quite strong and close to the bridge, but glide with the finger very light. Doesn't it sound nice? It's really sparkly. And now I start from the middle division, the A, and I go up. And now I start from the middle and go the other way. It's different to but interesting, isn't it? I actually wrote a piece based on this curious behavior and called it the harmonic jester. And the link is mentioned below. The behavior is called mirror uh, geometry. Like from the middle, you have exactly the same going both ways and exactly the same harmonics. Now I show two more interesting things. First, the division by seven. Well, you can't simplify seven and therefore this harmonic comes six times. Splitting into seven gives six notes. And also interestingly, the division into seven produces a seventh. So if you have A, the seventh is G. It's not easy to find. Yeah, the G is a little bit flat, but that's natural. So, supposed to, I can find this six times. Let's have a look.
well, feels like this harmonic is everywhere. And now, a last interesting thing. And the question, who made up the scale? And second, why do all cultures in the world have a similar scale with a fifth, a fourth, a major third? And not something random. And that's because it's natural. Now, it doesn't sound, I want to show that, and it doesn't sound too squeaky, I go this time up the D string. And I go to the octave, the next division, and the next D. And now, I need you to believe me. I will not manipulate the finger. There's no trick. I just glide. Try it out. Don't push with the finger. The lighter the better. And now I play being a drummer. Like, of course you can do like this and bounce, but I will do what you do with the bow. And I go to the tip, but I hold it at a distance, like that. Then I bounce it down even higher and don't try to control it. And then I do the same and I make, make it all feel up bowish. And I push a little bit after the first that it continues jumping. Just a bit. The bounce focusing on how many bounces I want. Ta -da -da -dum. And the last one I bounce so that I can keep the bow up in the air after. important and we can make up any simple melody. Sounds always good. Great way to start composing up a little piece. The last one are two octave shifts. It seems absurd, but surprisingly it works. Big shifts are regarded as hard, but believe it or not, they're hard because we try to take too much control of our intuition. Like we look there and it doesn't help because fingerboard is everywhere black, you can't see where it's in tune out of tune. Looking doesn't help at all. So what I do is I do so large shifts that controlling is anyway out of the question. Even if it will not work today, it's a bit, of, a bit of a shift in thinking, or not thinking, and already in a few days, maybe, or maybe suddenly, on just the right day, it might come. I will do two octave shifts. I start, for, start from a high C, but I start from the top. So I'll go up and down, and do it fast. Now I'll do I will do two octave shifts. And I start from the C. Well, if it doesn't go 100%, you just correct quickly. But um, you lose your fear of going wrong. And the correction comes easy because uh, you don't try to control it. You don't freeze. So just play it, make mistakes, and have a go. Big shifts. And that's the menu for today. Have fun. Well, I hope you will enjoy at least some of these silly games.
As mentioned, if you click below the video on show more, there's a list of content of all the things shown in the minutes and seconds when the sections start. So when you're interested in a particular one, just go to that time, like 2 minutes and 10 seconds, whatever, and there you are. Goodbye for today.